Hey, Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today we're TIG welding an aluminum intake for a project car. Let's do it. This should give us a lot to talk about because we've got some really thick stuff there, a half inch plate, some thin sheet metal, some uh, eighth inch thick wall, tubing, and then these little bungs here for the injector ports. And one of these has some issues with it. See, it's kind of chewed up a little bit with a saw blade, and plus it's shorter than the rest, and they all kind of need to be close because the fuel rail will only have so much play. Now, the reason for the braided copper wire that came out of an old TIG torch there is, is it's good for little aluminum parts like this. It helps to pull heat out. This little aluminum part will be saturated with heat before I know it, and then I have accidentally before when I first started welding aluminum, kept on something like this too long and wound up with just a big blob of solder on the floor and so you don't want to do that even with the with the copper wire on there I'm gonna stop every three quarters of an inch or so and let it cool maybe even give it a shot of canned air to cool it off and so I, I'm not showing cooling it off here but this took several minutes to do with the cooling in between I'm building it up with 4043 wire the alloy is 6061 T6 I'm sure it won't be T6 when I'm done welding it here, but <laughs> that's part of the game. It'll be it'll be good enough. I get a nice little build up on there, and then I'll take a sanding disc to that and kind of cope it, especially on the inside, so that the flow will be smooth. And I actually decided just to get one tack or, or two on these things, uh, just to just so I do a, a kind of a match up fit before I weld them out. Now I'm using a piece off of my Build Pro, my Stronghand Build Pro table there for kind of a strong back and a way to easily clamp this down. It's setting on a Stronghand fixture point table, but it's not that strong and I need some something a little bit more beefy. I can tolerate a little bit of distortion because I have a machinist friend who agreed to deck this thing for me if it's too bad. But you can see I've got a little issue here. I'm going to, I'm getting down in between those two tubes, there's not much space there. I'm going to have to extend my electrode way out and and even then coming at it from both sides is going to be necessary and I can just tell it's going to be a little bit of a trick getting weld all the way in there and getting it tied in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, add just a little pad here of weld. Weld metal, 4043 weld metal, melts at slightly lower temperature than most of the base metals that you would weld with it. This is 6061 base metal and the 4043 has got a little silicon 5% or so silicon in it and so it just melts slightly lower so I'm, my thinking is if I get a little pad here already it's just going to help me to get the weld all the way up in there and I forgot to do the other end of it so we'll be able to compare which one does work better. I decided not to weld these out they're pretty close but I want to make sure that they fit and I'll be able to get a fit with the fuel rail pretty easily so I'm just going to proceed and leave those for the the very last. I don't have it clamped down yet. I'm just getting a few tacks here and there before I start tweaking and tapping and massaging and trying to get all these things straight as possible. The main thing is going to be keeping that mounting flange fairly flat, but another thing that's going to be important is up here where the, the radius, you know, you don't want to have a bunch of lip hanging over there. It'll kind of disturb the flow, so I'm going to tweak those around one at a time, get them as close as possible, and just get a tack here and there on them. And I'll get a couple on the ends first and then bang them around and then I won't make you watch all that. Now a question comes up a lot about welding thick to thin. This is half inch plate to eighth wall tubing. That's like 12 and a half millimeter thick plate to three, uh, 3.2 millimeter wall tubing. And what I'm doing here is I'm aiming the arc at the thick piece and I'm preheating it a little bit before I ever wander. You see it kind of wanted to wander over there anyway. It will preferentially melt the thin member. So you kind of have to direct the heat to the thick part and then jab some wire in there and get it started. This one's got just a little tiny gap so it's going to want to melt that edge a lot more. If it wanders right over there. The thing to do is just get off the pedal, move the arc over to the thick piece and you see it wanted to jump over there again and just get some wire in there. Once you get filler metal joining the two pieces, then you are in pretty good shape. Also, it helps to use a sharpened electrode. It's a little bit easier to direct the arc with a sharpened electrode. You get a nice crisp start. It doesn't want to wander over quite as much, but you still need to direct the heat to the thicker member and, and get some rod in there quickly. 
In fact, I weld a lot of aluminum with a point just like that. I've got two welding machines sitting side by side here. On the left is a Miller Dynasty 280. On the right is an Everlast 255 EXT. The Everlast was sent to me to kind of test out and try out, so that's what I'm using today. If all goes as planned, part two of this video, I will the other half of this thing using the Miller Dynasty and go over some of the settings there. All right, I've got it set at 225 amps. I rarely needed that much. I'm using advanced square wave because that half inch thick plate, you kind of need advanced square wave to get as much heat as you can out of, the, out of this thing. I'm not using pulse today, although it probably would have been a, a pretty good way to do this job. I've got it set on normal setup as opposed to the easy setups that they have that kind of preset settings for you. I'm using 77 on the AC frequency. 31 on the AC balance, that's 31% cleaning, no downslope, 7 seconds of post flow, just enough to keep my electrode clean, 0.2 seconds of pre flow, and my start amps at 5, which was a little bit low, and you could hear the you could hear the arc stutter a little bit. That got a little bit better when I changed it up to around 25 amps on start. I'm using 75 percent argon, 25 percent helium mixed gas today. And I'm going to do a little mock-up here before I really get into this thing using the same thicknesses. Half inch base plate to an eighth of an inch top plate and just kind of tweak the settings and get used to welding aluminum again. Again I'm using the strong hand plate off the build pro table and it's bolted down to the fixture pro table and you can see how easy it is to just clamp something down like that with those vice grip type clamps. These little areas here where I'm going to have to extend the electrode a long way I'm, I'm just making a quick dam of aluminum foil and the reason for the aluminum foil is because I'm going to have to extend the electrode pretty far to get down in there and I'm going to need all the help I can with argon coverage and so that'll just provide a little dam to, to keep the argon from flowing over and, and screwing up. Now this is what I had on there and try I tried it out, didn't work very well. It's actually a pretty good setup for a lot of aluminum jobs. Just a number five lava cup, 332nd electrode, standard collet body. This is a, this is a number 20 style torch. But it's going to work a lot better with a gas lens on it. So I do sell these at weldmonger.com. Might as well show them. So I'm going to put the gas lens on there and uh, a number six, a number six cup. And I should be able to get away with at least that kind of an extension there. May have to bump the flow rate up just a little bit, but my thinking is that's going to work a lot better than the number five standard. And I wound up just using it for the whole thing. I just didn't extend the electrode out quite as far except for in between them. Now I wasn't able to get any arc shots of the in between area. It was just too tight an area, but it worked out just, I would say, just okay. Again, I'm 77 hertz. I really need, I kind of need a lot of heat on this half inch thick metal. And the, the low hertz like that, slightly higher than a transformer machine, but um, just, I kind of like it. I really couldn't really explain why other than it puddles with that helium mix it puddles immediately I don't have to wait around to get a puddle started and uh, it worked out pretty well now here's a good example of changing direction on something round like this you can watch this run here I'm gonna stay on this shot for quite a while and you wanna change the angle of your torch to accommodate for the outside of a tube and, and so you're Every time you move the torch ahead in between adding filler, you need to be thinking about kind of rotating it around so that you maintain a fairly straight in angle with just a slight push angle. It's something you have to think about and do very intentionally or you just kind of get mesmerized by the puddle. Next thing you know, you got way too much push angle. I'm having to turn it all kinds of different ways here to keep it right. And in a minute, I'm about to duff the electrode. Boom, yeah. Sometimes you have to stop when that happens and just clean the electrode, but that was just a sputter. The puddle cleaned right up, so I decided just to keep going. Sometimes the best thing to do is just stop. If you get a big old rock of, of filler metal on your tungsten, it's best to just stop and clean it up. All right, well, that's half of it. And like I said, if all things go as planned, I will fire up the Dynasty 280. I'll do a little preview of this, and we'll show you the settings on the 280.
Well, that about wraps it up for this week. As always, I appreciate you spending time on my channel. I'd also appreciate if you'd head over to weldmonger.com and check out some of the products we have for sale there. See you next week.